Hi, I'm Lauren. And I'm Winston. And we're the Hackett family. So many of you out there are probably wondering what would motivate someone to be a foster family. And honestly, the answer is kind of simple for us. Um, from an early age, we both had the desire to help people. And we always had it in our heart that we either wanted to adopt or foster. And we see it as a very good way to give back to those kids that don't necessarily have a loving family to be in, or at least not at the moment. So it's kind of a journey that we both chose together and actually brought us together as a couple. I would say for myself, being a high school teacher, um, one of the things I discovered about myself in my journey teaching was that I have, I guess you could say, an uncanny ability to build rapport with people of that particular age group. Um, it's really not hard, in my opinion. It's just a lot of it's not taking a condescending tone, being available to be like an open ear or a shoulder for them to cry for. And I think, honestly, being that we you know, decided to foster teenagers, that, that comes in handy a lot because they feel that they can be honest and open with me and that there won't be, or us in general, not just me, um, and that there won't be automatic consequences just because they were honest about a feeling or something they might have done because it shouldn't have to be like that. I mean, open communication is probably one of the most key things in a foster and child relationship, and I think that that, for, on my part at least, helps a lot. I'd say um, the skill that I kind of brought into it was um, just being fun and, and calm. Um, I'm known as like the queen of calm, so puts up with sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when those situations arise, um, just like being able to be calm and, and work through them uh, with the kids is really helpful um, because they're already going through so much and so if you add to it by you know bringing your anxiety level into it it um, doesn't help at all <laughs> the biggest surprise of my fostering experience was how much the teens actually wanted my attention because um, when I thought about teenagers I was like okay they'll just like hang out in the room all the time and we'll like maybe see them at dinner um and that's not the case at all um <laughs> they're they're very out there and like what are you doing um where are you going now can i go with you yeah can i go with you it's like cool awesome great um, we can we play a game together and so uh do you want to go swimming it's always like what's what's the next thing that we're going to do together yeah. so i just didn't really expect for them to want to spend so much time with us which we really enjoy because we, we want to spend time with them. So it was kind of cool that they actually wanted it too. Yeah, definitely. I thought that was a cool <laughs> part too. To me, that's also the biggest surprise. It's really, I mean, you could say the food bill goes up a little bit, but that shouldn't really be a surprise, <laughs> you know, but it's definitely cool that they want to hang out on time. That's really awesome. Um, I'm Adriana. I'm 16 <laughs> years old. I'm Furman. I'm finna be 15. I'm Erica and I'm about to be 14. <laughs> okay, I'll start, I guess. <laughs> um, it's being able to like come together as a family and like laugh. And I love being able to spend time with everybody. And you know, like even though we've been here for like a couple months, like I feel like I've known them my whole life. So it's like that's really something that's important because like it takes time for you to just sit down and talk to one another as a family. Mm -hmm. I like that we can all like sit around the table and laugh and we can play games with each other and that we're like and we're all like loving and caring we're all like supporting each other that's what i was gonna say too just like the fact that we like can all like play games and hang out together and um just like a regular family um a bonus family it's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> I'll start again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that really what makes a good foster home is that communication is a big part. Like you have to be able to communicate with one another and you know not everybody's gonna just know everybody just based on their cover. Like it's not like that. Like people have gone through a lot and it takes time for you to communicate with them and you know, speak with them and understand where they're coming from and not putting as much pressure and making it worse. Like, you, like, just be there, support them, talk to them, make them laugh, you know, like, that's, that's really a big key. Like, trust, like, because kids, like, they're built on trust because sometimes people can hurt them so much that they really don't, like, they don't know who to trust, so you, like, build that up with them by like, communicating with them and talking to them and stuff like that.
So I think the important thing to pe- uh, for people to know in fostering teens is just to give them time. Yeah. Um, you're not going to be able to like jump right in and be like, okay, tell me about your entire life. Um, let them tell you. Yeah. And, in a little bit of you know pieces, you know we um, every day I feel like I, I learn something new about them and their story, and they will be open to tell you, but they have to develop that. Um, trust with you first and so just give them the time to get to know you maybe share some of your story and then allow them to do it in their own timing Um, because when you give them that time they're going to be more open they're going to share a lot more with you and um, it'll it'll be a lot helpful when um, trying to communicate with them it's not scary (laughs) <laughs> there is a misconception out there, which, you know, they address in a lot of the meetings where even the, uh, the the pre-information meeting, all those, that fostering teens is somehow scary or like, you know, you know, not desirable in some way, shape or form because, oh, they're all full of hormones and stuff. Okay, we're all full of hormones. <laughs> but the point is, it can be a little tricky sometimes. That's fair. But the other side of that is, the other side of that, <clears throat> that dual edge blade is that it can also be way more rewarding too. Because, and our kids have said this to us is teenagers have been through a lot more they've seen a lot more they might also be more aware of what's happened to them and for that reason you know it can be hard to crack that shell because you know any of us will put on a protective shell it's just it's it's natural but Mm -hmm. when you're able to kind of break that down and and actually have like a heart-to-heart a real like real communication that replaces the joy of a million other things and yeah little kids are great too that's fine but it's it's unfortunate that a lot of teenagers get overlooked and I'm just here to tell you that it is not scary. It's actually very rewarding. It just takes you to a little more time and it takes you to be a little more understanding. And if you can do those things, which if you're going to be fostering, you probably are very capable of, <laughs> it's something you should really consider because the love's there more than you may realize. It's not like teenagers are cold and callous or all those things that you need to be, <laughs> honestly. It's been very rewarding for us, I can say. And, you know, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. <laughs>